Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hello, my name is Mariana and today I have a video that a lot of you guys asked me to film and I'm going to show you all of my brush pens. So this is my collection of brush pens. I have a couple colored pens but most of them are black and all of these here are brush pens aside from the five or six that are on the right of this box. So I'll be testing all of these brush pens for you guys and by the end of this video you'll be able to choose the one you think will work best for you. And I bought all of these brush pens because I wanted to test all of them, not only for you, but for me as well, because I wanted to know which one was my favorite. And, and before we start, I just want to say that if you're starting brush pen lettering or anything like that right now, you don't need a lot of brush pens. You need like two or three so you can train. You don't need to spend a lot of money. You can go ahead and buy cheaper ones. And in this video, I'll show you my favorite pens, so you can also choose the ones that I think will work best for beginners and the ones I like overall. I just want to say that I have been using brush pens for two weeks only, and that's, that's it. I just want to share my opinion on them. So I have a couple different brush pens here. The first one is the Ginza brush pen from a Brazilian brand called New Pen. I'm not sure if you guys can buy this outside of Brazil and Portugal, but you can try to find it. It has a very small tip and it's more like a hard tip and not a soft tip. So it's a little bit more, so you need a little bit more force to letter with it. I'll be starting testing this pen in a, an average paper and the quality of the paper here is important. As you'll see, this pen does bleed a little bit in this type of paper. So, you, so if you have a paper that is not very great quality, this pen is going to bleed a little bit. And it's not easy it's not that easy to make the the larger strokes because it has a more rigid tip. And another thing that I want to show you guys is that, like I said before, the quality of the paper matters. So if I use this pen in another paper that has a greater quality like this one that I just got, the bleeding will be much, much less evident than before. So it bleeds less, it's easier to write on because the paper is smoother and overall the experience is better. So if you're thinking about buying a brush pen and to start lettering, I would highly recommend you get a softer and higher quality paper because it does matter. Anyway, I don't think the tip of this pen is going to last a very long time. I think uh, if you use it as a beginner, you will end up destroying or damaging the tip very quickly because it is a harder tip, so you have to apply more pressure. And usually beginner, beginners apply a lot of pressure, pressure on their brush pens, and this tip is not going to last a very long time if you do that. So I wouldn't recommend this pen for beginners. I don't find it very easy to write with. And overall, I just think it's not a great uh, option for beginners, even though it's a great brush pen overall. Next up, we have my favorite brush pen, not only for beginners, but for anyone. This is the Pentel Touch, and this is a great pen. It has a very, very small tip, so you can only do small lettering, small titles, and things like that but the tip is fantastic. It is rigid, but it's soft at the same time. It's a little bit uh, complicated to explain. I really like the tip. It's very easy to make um, thin strokes and it's very crisp and easy to use. It doesn't bleed a lot and the bigger strokes demand a little bit more pressure, but because the tip is a little bit more rigid, I think it it is going to last a long time. It looks like it's very durable and overall I really really like this pen. 
One downside of this pen is that it is also affected by the quality of the paper. As you can see here, I am trying to write with it on the bad quality paper and it does bleed a little bit, like you can see a little bit of the ink going all places when I place down the ink on the paper. However, if you use this pen on the higher quality paper, like what happened with the Ginza brush pen, the bleeding is much much less evident than before actually you can see you can't see any bleeding at all so the higher quality paper really matters and that's the only downside uh, i think of this pen is that it is a little bit affected by the quality of the paper but it's very easy to use and i would highly highly recommend this for a beginner i really enjoy writing with it and i think i'm learning a lot by using this pen Next up, we're going to see the Pigma brush pens. We have the Pigma brush, the Pigma Sakura FB, and the Pigma Sakura MB, which stands for fine brush and medium brush. And as you can see, the Pigma medium brush and fine brush, they are the same model, but with different tips. And the Pigma brush is actually much, much different than the other ones. It has a different it is a different model and the tip is very, very different. I'm going to show you guys right now. Here is the close up of the names if you guys are interested in buying them. And now let's have a look at the tip of each one. This is the median brush and this one is the fine brush. You can see it's much, much smaller. And finally, the Pigma brush is completely different. The tip is very thin and very long. And this feels and looks much more like a actual brush than any other brush I have ever used. And the fine and the medium sakuras, they are both softer than the other pens I have tested, but they are not completely soft. They have a little bit of rigidity in them. The sakura brush, it's not rigid at all. It's very, very soft and malleable. You can use it just like a brush. Let's start testing the Pigma brush. This one has a very, very soft tip, like I said before. So it is a little bit harder to control, especially if you're a beginner, but it has some very, very nice pigmentation. It's very black and it's very easy to make the large strokes because it is so soft, you can just press and it's gonna easily create those beautiful, large strokes that are very common and very characteristic of lettering. Overall, the Pigma pens are not very much affected by the quality of paper, at least I didn't notice this. And the, the difference between the bad quality paper and the good quality paper is not really evident. You can't really see a lot of difference. So I really think it doesn't affect the pen or the quality of the lettering at all or almost at all. And like I said before, the hardest and worst thing about this pen is that it's very, very difficult to control, especially if you're a beginner. Like I said, I am a beginner and I find it a little bit difficult, especially for the very thin strokes. Uh, usually what you'll get is your thin strokes will be a little bit shaky and not not quite as crisp as the ones you can get with the Pentel Touch, for example. But the quality of the Pigma brushes is amazing. All of them have amazing quality and I really like them. Next up, we have the Pigma Sakura FB, which has a very, very small tip. This tip is slightly softer than the Pentel Touch one, so it's a little bit more difficult to control. And I also feel like the tip is not going to be as resistant and last longing as the Pentel Touch. And the one thing that I must say about this uh, specific, specific pen is that the ink is not quite as pigmented as other pens. It's not truly really black. When it dries, it dries like a very dark uh, kind of brownish gray color. So it's not as dark and as black as other pens I have tested. But for me, this is not a problem because I actually like uh, brush pens that are not completely black and not super dark because this way, when I write my notes and my titles, uh, the titles are not as dark 
and my notes are not as dark, so I prefer it to be less dark. Next up, we have the Pigma, Pigma Sacra MB, which is the median tip, and this produces larger strokes and larger lettering. It is a little bit more difficult to control because since the tip is larger than the FB one, it is a lot softer as well. So it's a little bit more complicated to get those crisp, crisp and unshaky fine lines. And it also has the characteristic of the previous Sakura brush, which is the fact that it's not completely dark, like it's not completely black. When this ink dries, it dries again a brownish gray color, so it's not as vibrantly black. I don't know if that's a thing, but it's not as black as the other ones. But I really like the quality of this pen as well. Next up, we have the very famous and well-known Tombow pens. I'll start with the Tombow Fudenosuke hard tip and soft tip, and then I'll go to the traditional Tombow ABT N25, which is the very, very big and bulky Tombow pen. As you can see, it is huge compared to the Pigma brush and compared to the Tombow Fudenosuke pens. And I think you're gonna have a very hard time finding a pencil case in which this actually fits because it's huge. This is a little bit of a close-up. As you can see, the first pen we have here is the Fudenosuke with a hard tip. It has a bluish uh, cover. And then the second one is the Tombow Fudenosuke soft tip, which has a green, kind of a green gray uh, cover. And the last one is the traditional Tombow N N25 that has two different tips. Now let's have a look at the tips. So the first one we have here is the Tombow, no Tombow Fudenosuke Hard and then the soft one. The tips are pretty much the same size, the same length, and they look pretty much the same thing, but one is harder than the other. And then this is the tip of the Tombow that we usually see in videos. It's very, very large. It produces very large lettering and is a lot, a lot softer than the other two. And now I'm gonna show you guys the other tip of the Tombow N25, which is a bullet tip as I'll show you. There you go, we have the bullet tip and I'm, I don't usually use this tip for anything. So I'm not sure if I'm going to use it for something, but there you go. So I'll start testing the Tombow Fudenosuke soft tip and I was very surprised when I first used this pen because I actually thought this was the hard tip. It's not very soft and I actually think it's very very similar to the Pentel Touch pen which is great. I really really love these pens. So the Tombow Fudenosuke Soft and the Pentel Touch are two incredible pens that any beginner I think is gonna have a easier time using than any other pens I have tested so far. It's a really really great pen. It's not very much affected by the quality of the paper either differently from the Pentel Touch, which suffered a little bit with the lower, lower quality paper. This one doesn't bleed at all. It has no problem, problem going over the bad paper or the good paper. And like the Pentel Touch, it has very, very crisp lines and it's very used it, it's very easy to make the thin lines and it's a little bit harder to make the larger strokes but that's because it is a little bit more rigid, so you have to apply a little bit more pressure. But because of that, I think the tip is going to last a long time as well, which is great. Next, we have the Tombow Fudenosuke hard tip. And I don't like this one as much as the other one because you need to apply a little bit more pressure to get those large strokes. And this is a very good pen as well. I just think the other one is better because you don't have to apply as much pressure as with this one. 
and it also produces very crisp lines and it's a very very easy pen to use. I just think it, the soft tip is more comfortable to write with. And just like the other Tombow, the quality of the paper doesn't affect this pen at all. You can write on bad, on bad or good paper and I think you won't have a problem at all. It doesn't bleed, it's very very nice to write with. So the pen tail touch, this pen here and the Fudanasuki Soft are three great pens to start with. Next we have the traditional Tombow which has a very very large tip. This one produces larger lettering but because it is bigger it is more difficult to control. As you'll see I have a little bit of a harder time to make the thin strokes. The the large strokes are not a lot of problem. I don't have lots of problem doing it, but the thin, but the thinner strokes are a little bit more difficult to control, and also the tr transition between thin to large is much more difficult than with the smaller pens. However, the quality of this pen is amazing. I'm not sure if the tip is going to last a long time because I did notice that the point of the the tip of the tip is very very soft, but the body of the tip is not soft at all. Like it's very rigid. So I think if you apply a lot of pressure with this pen, what is going to happen is that the tip of the tip is going to be damaged. So your fine lines won't be as crisp or as beautiful as before. But again, I'm not sure because I have just started with this. And until now, I have not found a larger brush pen that I found very easy to use. The Tombow is not super difficult to control, but it's not super easy either. And then I'm going to show you guys the other tip, the bullet tip. It's a very, very thin uh, bullet tip point. Actually, it doesn't look as small as it actually writes because it's kind of a fat bullet uh, tip. Anyway, it writes very thin. I think it's a nice quality pen. It's just a little bit expensive and it produces a larger lettering. So if you're looking for larger titles, I would go for the Tombow and 25. Next up we have two other pens. We have first the DB brush which is a brand I have never heard of before and it's in the same style as the Tombow but it's a little bit smaller and it has two tips as well. It has a brush tip and a, bull a bullet tip but it's not good like it's not great at all. This was the most expensive brush pen I bought so far so I had really really high hopes for it but it's not good and I'll talk about that later. Then we also have another large tip brush pen which is the Echo Line brush pen which was also expensive but it has a very nice tip and it's actually refillable so you can so you can just change the ink and you can and you're good to go. You can also change the tip, you just have to pick it out and then change the side of the tip in order to change the tip. So it's a very very nice brush, I like it a lot and this is the close-up of the brushes as you can see. This, this is the tip of the DB brush, it has a big tip but it's not very fat. The Ecoline brush pen actually has a shorter tip that is a little bit uh, fatter then the DB brush and then the Tombo is the biggest uh, between these three larger brush pens and then this is the other tip of the, DB, of the DB brush which is a bullet tip. So as you can see here in the video I had a really really hard time lettering with this brush pen. The thin strokes are not easy at all to make and they are not really super thin they are not only difficult to make because the tip is kind of soft, but also because it doesn't have the same consistency of ink as the other brushes I have tested. So by far this is my least favorite brush. I really find it super difficult to write with and I'm not sure if this is because I am a beginner, but the tip is also already getting destroyed. I'm not sure if in if you can see in this video that the tip is already kind of opening 
and it's not gonna last a very long time. In fact, after only two or three days, I already had a very, very large very very hard time getting the very thin uh, brush strokes because the tip was already damaged so this was like money thrown in the garbage i really don't like this pen i would not buy it again even it, even after i train a lot and get to know a lot about lettering i don't think i'm gonna buy this again the only thing that i found was great about this brush pen is that it's very pigmented and it is a very very dark black so if you're looking for something that is very very dark and has a lot of ink to it this is a good pen for that but i wouldn't recommend it either way because i think the quality of the tip is just not great and you're gonna throw this out after a couple of uses so it's really not worth your money next we have the echo line brush pen which i love like this is a softer brush so it is much harder to control but unlike the db brush this has a great great tip and even though it's soft it's not super hard to control as you can see it's much easier than the debris brush and it produces very large strokes so it has some very nice large down strokes and the thin strokes are a little bit more difficult to control and to make because the tip is a lot softer than the tombow for example so out of the three, I think the Tombow is the easiest to use. The Echo Line has a very, very nice quality and it also has a, another characteristic that I found very interesting, which is a watercolor-like effect because it is, I think, water-based. I'm not quite sure, but it has a beautiful dark and light effect to each stroke. So if you... So if you apply more pressure at some place in your lettering, it's going to be darker, darker. And if you apply less pressure, it's going to be lighter. So I think this, this is very, very nice. I really like this pen. And I forgot to talk about one pen, which is the Faber-Castell Pit Artist brush pen, which is this one over here. I forgot to talk. I forgot to talk about it because I actually don't love it as much, but I'm gonna get to this in a second. This is the tip of the Faber-Castell uh, brush pen. It's very thin and very long, and it produces a medium to small uh, lettering, I would say. And it's quite comfortable to write with because of the ergonomics of the pen, but the quality of the tip, I just don't like it. I don't love it at all. And that's because I think I am a beginner, so I apply a little bit more pressure than I than I probably need to, even though I have a very, very soft hand, like I don't apply a lot of pressure, I think. But this tip, it's very thin and it's very long, so it is a little bit harder to control and it also moves a lot if you apply pressure but like the echo line you can take the tip out and just change the side of the tip to get a newer tip however i found that the tip of the faber casto pan doesn't last a long time at all uh, it started to get damaged after a couple of weeks i would say two weeks maybe and i don't know I just don't love it and maybe that's because I was trying to make very very small lettering with this like very small titles as you can see I'm trying right now and it doesn't work that well with very small titles I would say it's more like a medium to um, medium small title range for lettering so I wouldn't recommend this for really small lettering it's more towards medium lettering and the color is fine I think the pigmented the pigmentation is great it's very dark and black but I don't really like to spend as much so now I'm going to show a close-up of all the brush pens we tested we have the Ginza brush pen the Pentel touch the Pigma Sakura FB the Pigma brush as you can see and then we have the bigger the bigger brush pens which are the Tombow the DB brush and the Echo line 
I think the Tombow is the easiest to use and the Echo line is the prettiest because it has this beautiful watercolor effect, like I said before. I'm not quite sure if you guys can see this on camera, but I think it's very, very pretty. And the DB brush is the darkest one, but it's the worst one. Don't buy the DB brush. So these were all of my brush pens. Again, if you are just starting out, I would tell you to go for the Tombow Fudenosuke pens or the Pentel Touch, which I think is a little bit less expensive. They are both great, great brush pens and great for beginners. You'll be able to control your pen much, much easier than any other brush pens I have tested today. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and this video was helpful to you. And if it was, please leave a like and also subscribe to my channel. I'll be happy to have you here in the community. And now let me show you the close up of all the tests.